chair now? All right. Yeah. So today's speaker is Gary Coitz Lermaus Biaga. He earned his PhD from the BCBL, Bach Center on Cognition, Brain and Language. After his PhD, he had some experience in, at Stanford University. And then now he's, uh, he came back to the BCBL for, uh, for uh, uh, with a Marie Curie Fellowship. So today's talk and hands on activity is going to be on uh, the validation framework in neuron imaging. And yeah, without no other delay, we the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Alberto. So I'm going to share the screen now. Let me know if, if it works. Yeah, is it there? Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay. Okay. And uh, thank you for the for the organizers and uh, you know, it's been a wonderful uh, brain hack. So uh, very happy to to be here. So as uh, Alberto was saying, I'm going to present a, a validation framework that it's um, the philosophy is, is generic for all neuroimage uh, software, but um, we use it for population receptive, uh, receptive fields. And I will explain what the population receptive fields are and, and everything. And uh, before I start with the talk, I wanted to, to give the, the link to the Docker containers that I will be using in the, in the hands-on in the, in the second hour of the, of the talk. So I think I, I pasted them um, already in the, in the chat, but I'm going to I've paste just them done it, Gary. again. Don't worry, I've done it. Ah, you did it? Okay. Yeah. So, um, perfect. So they take, uh, it's 10 gigabytes. I know that you need a little bit of a speed to, to be able to download them in one hour, but and as Eneko was saying, the talk will be recorded. The, all the steps are um, very well documented in the, in the slides. So you will be able to, to go on uh, later on uh, today. And it's going to be very, uh, very easy. Okay, and just, uh, I know that I'm in a brain hack, brain hack. I think that I don't need to explain what containers are, right? In echo? In other presentations, I, I need to, to explain, not here. Yeah, maybe you should explain it at least like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, basically uh, the containers isolate, isolate the, the software library and operative uh, uh, system so that you, are, you can be sure that you are always running the, the very same code. So, and I prepared three different uh, uh, containers. You are seeing the, yeah, three different uh, containers that we will use in the, in the framework. And you can install Docker, Mac, Linux, or Windows, even though the software will be running in, in Linux, but you don't care. That's going to be uh, transparent uh, for you. And, and all of us that are using the same Docker container will have exactly the same results at the um, at the end. Well, maybe you know because I've got so there, but it should be it should be the same. Okay, so um, first of all, I prepare a small uh, preface to uh, to this talk because um, uh, I know that replication and generalization mean different things to to everybody. We we call out uh, computational uh, reproducibility, but um, uh, I would like to talk about general scientific uh, replication. And I would be really happy that in the question and answers, uh, we discuss about all of these terms. And afterwards, from four to five, I plan to be in the other town as well. So I would be uh, really be happy to, to be talking with you about what you think about all of these uh, concepts. And uh, this um, we published um, uh, last year, and um, today's talk is not going to be about this, but I think that it's a part um, of the uh, valid software validation is a part of the whole of the whole thing. So, um, if we um, separate the, the typical MRI different parts, there are other ways of classifying the, the parts, but this is our way of, classif of classifying. We can, um, the, the four main um, groups would be experimental design, and this mostly applies for, um, uh, 
functional MRI. So these are all your uh, manipulations you do, all your stimuli, all your tasks and, and you are designing. And if you are doing a structural, it's less interesting, but maybe it can be if you've been drinking coffee or not, how it's affecting your, your brain structure or the day and the time of the day you are scanning, you could do so many populations and MRI as well, okay? This would be the experimental design. Population stats is that, imagine that we are using 20 right-handed young adults. So that would be our population stats that, that they are going to be different in every, in every experiment and they try to to be on the tip of some, of some population. And then that acquisition, it's an everything related to, to MRI scanner. So we know that exactly the same MRI scanner with the same code, with the, uh, with the same software, can give different results in, in different uh, centers and depending on the calibration, it will be different results. So this is everything related to the, to the data acquisition from the um, software version you've got installed in the, in the machine until the sequences, the sequences that you've been uh, designing for, for your experiment. And at last, the computational methods, we know what, what it is, or uh, in SPM or FSL or AFNI or whatever uh, you are using and all the statistical analysis you do until the, you generate the, and the last figure that goes to, to, to your paper, right? From the data to, the, to your conclusions. And um, if you see a published paper, and, and you run an experiment like this, you will have a, a hopefully a, a finding that others will find it uh, interesting. And maybe they won't replicate that experiment. And uh, for us, replication means when uh, you try to obtain the same results, apply um, the, the same parts of the experiment. So uh, you will ask for the same stimuli, you will run it exactly the same way. The population starts, the subjects are going to be different, but I don't know if you guess that the colors are very similar. Well, so you are trying, your intention is to make it as similar in an experiment. So you will have as well 20 right-handed young adults from the university taking your, your experiment. And if you got the same scanner, you will ask for the sequences. If you got a different brand, then it cannot be exactly the same sequence, but you will try to match the TRs and the TEs and as much parameters as you as you can. And uh, computational methods, in this case, is exactly the same color because uh, nowadays we know that we can run exactly, we use container technology or other uh, technologies. We know that basically we can use the same software is the if the original experimenters share the share the code. Okay, and then and we replicate it, it's a, it's a nice result, another team replicates it, another team replicates it, and um, that's what we call replication, and then we've got a, a sound result in the, in the literature, right? that always, always happens. And imagine that these results have a clinic that we want to move to the, to the clinic because we think that it can be useful um, to diagnose some illness or, or whatever. And then, uh, we, what we call, this is the generalization experiment. Okay, so these findings are working well in this uh, control environment from a, from a research center. And one generalization we could think is, does it work well in a in 1.5 scanner from a hospital? Can maintain everything else the same and just um, keep changing the and, Parts of the uh, of the experiment, right? Or and it was working with twenty uh, uh, young adults. Is it working with kids? Is it working with the elderly? Is it working with uh, um, with friends? And um, the same with experimental design, and the same with computational methods. Okay, so here we were using these uh, fancy container technologies, and does it work when I'm using the software I'm used to uh, to work with? And basically, we are defining the scope where this result um, is, is working. So maybe in order to be able to detect, um, detect this result, uh, we need at least three Teslas. And we cannot detect with 1.5 uh, Teslas. But we don't know unless um, we don't start um, running what we call this generalization experiment that we've got the intention 
of defining the scope of, of this finding that it works well in the um, environment, right? So these are some um, some definition, and of course it's full of nuances that I will be very happy to to, dis to discuss with you. But and this talk is about software validation. This is a, a brain hack. So and and we came up with the we didn't come up. We think that um, computational reproducibility goes only in in this part of the whole process. Basically means that if I introduce the same data, I should be always be able to to get the same the same results, right? And uh, the generalization part here it would mean if I put the same uh, data and with different uh, computational methods, I should be able to get the same the the same results because the data is the same, the biology and the and the experimental manipulations we did were, were the same, I should be able to, to obtain the, the same results. And, and in this discussion, we think that and if we talk about software uh, validation, it covers uh, both reproducibility and generalization. Because reproducibility only, and if here I got a wrong result because I had a bug or because my model is not working well then i will have reproducibly wrong uh, results right so um reproducibility is just one part of the um, of the equation we we want sure that our software is returning the the correct results and that it's and that it's working but we want it to work always so that's why it's important the reproducibility part and the generalization part once that uh, if you got five different softwares, but five, the five different software valid, you are already generalizing. So uh, for me, the, the concept of uh, software validation and includes both possibility and the and the generalization concepts. So again, very happy to to discuss this uh, later on. So, and this was the, the, the preface, and where do we see the, the software validation in the whole uh, scientific, uh, scientific uh, process in, in neuroimaging, okay? And, and now I'm going to, to explain chronologically why we started this, uh, this project. Uh, it, it didn't came out of the blue on, oh, we should, uh, do this because it's interesting from from science. Of course, it is interesting from science, but it's got a, a history, and and I think it and, uh, we will see why it has this history and why it's been uh, very important and why how we are obtaining very interesting results. So, and we saw a, a discrepancy in the population receptive field or PRF from from now on PRF uh, literature. So um, I will, in order to, I, I know that not many of you are familiar with uh, PRF, so I will do a, a two minutes of, of PRF basics and I will explain what this discrepancy was, okay? And then um, I will explain the software validation framework we, did, we came up in order to solve this, this discrepancy and then I, I will show the, the results. So the, the results is that uh, thanks to this, this validation framework, we came with uh, new findings and design recommendations for um, everybody using PRFs. That if we hadn't built this, uh, this thing, we wouldn't be, um, well, uh, it's possible to get to this conclusion without this, this framework, but uh, you will need to do something very specific in order to, to get them. And then um, we've got our solution to the, uh, to the and for that uh, we really needed the, the software validation framework. So it's not, this is not going to be a, a, only a theoretical exercise or a, a software computer science exercise. It's got uh, real scientific uh, applications that and, and it's ready that that's what I'm going to, to show. And then uh, to be the, the first hour, and um, Alberto was telling me that it's better that we do, do the talk, uh, the Q&A, and then we will start the, uh, a very simple hands-on that if you got the Docker containers installed, um, it will be better to follow. 
Okay, so um, yes, I'm talking about the, the PRFs uh, basics now. So we know that the, the visual cortex is retinally mapped, right? So this is the, the, the visual cortex. And this means that there is a correspondence between the neurons in the, in the cortex and the, and the receptive field in, in a space. So in every, there is a, between the, the neurons or the voxels in the, in the cortex, in the visual cortex, and what part of the eye and are we referring to? So, for example, center of our eye, the, the fovea, will be represented in, in here in the pole, and the more external uh, parts of the eye presented in 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 in, in more uh, anterior parts of the of the brain, as we can see in this in this example. So, um, some years ago, uh, yeah, two years ago, Dumoulin and Wandel uh, developed a, a, a quantitative uh, method to, to model population receptive fields. Okay, and, and basically, what we know is the the stimulus we are we are show uh, to the participants, and and we measure the the bold activation um, of the of the participant. Right? I right. would like to know, as I was saying, this exactly this uh, voxel and what is he, its population receptive field, which basically means it's going to be uh, in what area of the of the eye and is being represented by that voxel and what size. So, and with just three parameters, so x, y, and sigma, which is the diameter we can say, okay, and this voxel is computing the information coming from exactly this part of the, of the eye. And um, how, how does it work, this, this method? So um, we, we make a guess of this, of this receptive field, so x, y, and, and sigma. And we make a, a prediction of the, of the bulk. Later on, we will see with more, more detail how we do this, this prediction. And we do this prediction and we say, well, this, is, this was not a very good prediction. So, and we keep changing the, the parameters. Okay, this, this prediction is, not, is not, not bad. It's still not very good. And we keep changing until we get the combination of parameters that gives the, the best and goodness of fits possible between um, and, uh, with, uh, the time bulk series and they will say okay this voxel this is its population receptive field okay and here we are assuming um, with these three parameters x y and z and um, uh, we are getting the the best result right the best fit is going with this very simple but um, in 2018 uh, two papers uh, came out and the first was saying, yes, circular fits are better uh, than the elliptical fits. But there was another, another paper in 2018 as well that they were saying, no, it's the elliptical fits that are better. And not elliptical fits with a, a very uh, small aspect ratio, but um, with an aspect ratio of, of 2.5, which is, which is, um, it is considerably big. And, and in order to, to fit uh, ellipses, uh, we need to add another two parameters. One sigma, now we need the sigma major and the sigma minor, minor. and then uh, we need as well the, the angle. So because this um, ellipse can be oriented in, in a space. Okay? And they were claiming as well that this orientation was uh, phobia and, and uh, uh, some other claims. So w w one of our first question was, well, and, and the, the group I was with, uh, they've been, I mean, working on this for many years, and how come that we never were able to, to detect this um, uh, highly elliptical uh, receptive fields, right? That, that was one of the questions. So um, we set up to, to try to reproduce um, data experiment and our experiment in order to understand and what was going on, but and one of the um, one of the things that it can happen in this kind of experiment is that well and maybe the software or our software is not returning the 
and uh, it's not fitting the parameters as it should. Maybe it's not returning the uh, right fits, right? So uh, how can we know that? And it, it's very difficult. So and it, it's impossible to check the, the accuracy of, of any tool just and uh, looking at the at the source code. So we went to to Afni's uh, repository, and we see that they have like thousand of C uh, files, and we found where the modeling was done and it was 1400,000 lines of C code that we, uh, we were not familiar with and it's, it, it's really difficult to be able to say anything about the results just looking at the code and you know it's, it's we all of us, um, all of us have uh, saying this is, these are my results they are reproducible this is my github repository just go and check uh, it's impossible to, to, to check that we, this level um, of complexity, right? So um, well, what we think is that um, we the the way to go in order to the way using it's giving uh, right results is that we can uh, create and share uh, ground truth uh, data sets and then uh, make easy to to expose the the test. So. Um, it's not only that my results are reproducible, but if I told you that I used this uh, container, I run this test, the scope was between this and this measurement, I, I'm getting the valid results, and then I run my experimental data, and these are the results I'm, I'm getting. So we think this is the, 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 the approach we should take, and that's why we, we started building this um, uh, this software uh, validation framework and but you see what was the the original uh, idea or the, the original motivation right so and uh, it basically has three steps very simple everybody has done them but we just implemented them for prep so first in the step one uh, we synthesize ground truth uh, data set so with a, a big config file we run through a through our docker container and we get our uh, resulting parameters and synthetic bold uh, NIFTs that we can uh, later on analyze. And, and in the step two, and we implement different analysis tools. For this, right now we've got uh, five implementations and of five different tools that do a PRF, and there are at least another five that we know know of that in publications at least 10 different uh, implementation of the of the PRFs and uh, that's what why we think that we really need the and uh, to validate that all of those servers are, are providing good good results and this second step and um, we make sure that we've got common interfaces so I don't care if it's Python MATLAB or C the the they should take the same in and generate the same the same output so that we can uh, compare later on okay so um, then here there is a step of adaptation stimuli adaptation of an uh, input formats so that um, any tool can read it and then the same with the with the output and then we are guaranteeing because everything is implemented in a, in a container form we are guaranteeing reproducibility we, we told that uh, at the beginning that and reproducibility is um, implicit in the in validation. It should be it should be implicit in, in any validation framework. And the the last the ex, uh, the report uh, part, we we just uh, compare it to the ground truth. So we know what was the ground truth, which is here or here that we got it in in params, and we will compare it to to the results and see if all tools are uh, are working well. That's the, that's the main main idea and for the specific uh, PRF case that what I'm going to present today and uh, we call it PRF synthesize PRF analyze Vista, Avni, Popeye and analyze PRF these are four of the uh, implementation that they are available if you want to, to use them and there are and um, we've got another one and then they are interesting people but we really um, we really will help for anybody who wants to have their their tool implemented in in this way because it, it's got several advantages as, as we've been uh, telling and then the the last one is prf report so, 
oh, the one doing the, the, the mix. And um, how does it run? It's uh, very easy to, to use. So you just need a Docker installed or Singularity, but uh, we've been just uh, testing with Docker. You just need a Docker and a notepad to edit text. With that, all of these uh, complex frameworks or, or uh, pipelines or, or whatever you, you want to run, and it's um, programming language agnostic because, and as I was telling, and two of the tools that we've implemented are MATLAB. One is uh, C, uh, AFNI, as you saw, and, and the other one, Popeye, is in Python. So, but uh, for the an end user, the scientist that is running his uh, or has, um, they just don't care. They, with a notepad and a docker is, uh, is enough. And uh, how does it work? So, uh, first of all, um, PRFs are a very good candidate to, um, to, to, to implement in one of these uh, frameworks because it's, uh, it's actually a, a model. So what we do is uh, reverse the, the process I showed you before to, to do the, the feed with the, with the inputs and knowing the HRF, the inputs and the, and the receptive fields and adding noise, we can, we can synthesize size uh, the bolt series so the, the process is that and uh, we know the stimulus we do a matrix multiplication with the receptive field in this case is circular you saw that it could be elliptical it can have there are an uh, other variation on the receptive fields and you get a time basically you get a time series you convolve an hrf you get a noise free uh, bolt time series you add noise and you get the the synthetic uh, synthetic bolt uh, uh, signal and an appropriate um, model to to be used in a in a framework like like this, and and we model the noise as low frequency noise, physiological noise, white noise, in order to get the combined noise. Um, later on, uh, if somebody has interest, I, I've got other slides explaining how we do this in detail and how we use real data in order to and to be able to get the most accurate possible uh, noise for for synthesis, okay. Okay, so um, we we are in the synthesis part. We already explained to do the the synthesis. So basically, we are in this part of the um, of the framework. So next one is the is the analysis, as we as we saw, and and with the analysis, we know that not only it takes the synthesized data. If you got your experimental data, of course, it will and it will run it as well. If you and put it in the in the correct format, it will correct the same because we think that the the two steps that I, I already said that before, but I think it's worth worth repeating it. We think that and when we are publishing in neuro, in, uh, neuroimaging experiments. First, they should, it should exist a uh, step one where we are validating the software we are using and most importantly, the, the scope. Because uh, imagine that and, and then you run the, the same, exactly the same uh, container you use to analyze the synthetic data and then you validate that it's working fine. Then you run a uh, step two uh, with your experimental data. But um, the first step, it's not only interesting for that, it's interesting, for example, to design your stimuli and to optimize the stem stimuli you want to use in order to, uh, to detect the, the effect you are, uh, you are looking for, right? So you do several uh, simulations, you keep improving your stimuli, and, and then use your stimuli here with, um, to, to obtain the experimental data. And um, this is important that it's as well important. Uh, we've seen, we've seen uh, results of, I don't know, a fraction of a, of a degree or in millimeters. So very small, very, very small uh, change. You really should um, check before that your software with the level of noise you are going to get in fMRI is capable of, uh, it has the resolution to, to make uh, these small separations because sometimes there are, okay, I'm getting 0 0.1 degree differences in, I don't know what part of the, of the eye. If you would run uh, simulation with the, the level of noise you've been 
and in your scan, you'll see that that's not possible. You, you cannot get that level of, of accuracy. So um, I think that this would help a lot. Um, if we would do that, the, the results that get published would be much more reproducible because we would know what's the, the scope of application of every tool. And um, uh, yeah, and to, today we are going to see one, one example of, of exactly, exactly this, how um, with TR of one second, it's, the scope is good enough for our experiment. With TR of two seconds, it's not good enough and it cannot resolve the, the, the effects. We okay. So um, right now, when we, we talk about the, the analysis and, and now to the, to the results. And that's exactly what uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to show now, the, the results we, we obtain in our uh, So uh, first of all, and this is not that relevant for, for the PRF, but I think it's, it's relevant for any, any tool you, you want to check. Uh, if this is a model and we know we use the same model for synthesizing and for solving, when it's a noiseless case, we should be able to, to recover exactly the, the right parameters, right? So it, it wasn't even possible to, to do that because all the two different, uh, you know, interpolations, approximations, assumptions in the and, and when solving the, the, the ball time series that with the, even with the noiseless case, we couldn't get the right, uh, the, the right solution. We only analyzed PRF uh, did it. Okay, and it, this result depends as well in what are we, so it's different when we are working in the phobia that working in the periphery and there are, uh, there are differences. So we already start learning uh, from, the, from the beginning. And one of the things that we learn is that, okay, if we are seeing the results, that almost perfect results here, it's because we used exactly the same HRF when synthesizing the data and when uh, recovering the, the data. Because there is an HRF analysis mismatch and it has a, a big effect on the on the size uh, of the size of the PRF that we are that we are uh, recovering. So, and this, uh, as I would tell you, one uh, one of the conclusion of doing this um, framework and start testing it was that we already started learning about if we could just use one technique and our our technique and always the same HRF uh, always would have been. Uh, per different HRFs, and uh, we detected that this this problem was was happening, and uh, of course, um, uh, okay. I'm going to show first the 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 plot. So, and here in in X we see different tools, and, and in vertical we are using different HRFs used to synthesize the data. Okay, and so, um, so AFNI, for example, uh, we used AFNI to solve here, and um, AFNI is always using the old um, HRF for, for AFNI. So we, we see that how in the diagonal, when we use the same HRF to synthesize, and when we use the, the same HRF to, to get, get the, the estimates, we get the right results. So here, basically, we are doing 100 uh, noisy random noisy simulations in the same in the same position right and that's why we get this uh, this variability and we see that basically the median results are are correct but if we use um, an, a smaller a smaller hrf to synthesize we use to solve then we are going to get two small uh, estimates and the opposite is true as well. If we use uh, bigger HRFs to, to synthesize than to solve, we are going to get um, uh, too big. And this talk is about software validation, but uh, even though you get what are the implications, right? Because the, the HRFs in every human, in every voxel are, are going to be uh, different. 
and um, the, depending on the assumption we are going to the, the assumption the hrf assumption that our tool has it will have a strong a strong bias and we won't be able to compare for example size results between uh, different subjects of course not between different tools but it it really is and uh, then again so we found this uh, this problem and then we were able to simulate and propose different kinds of, of mitigation so one possible mitigation is that and um, we use a slower uh, uh, okay so and uh, you know that in, in when we are doing PRS basically there are uh, bars and uh, moving in your your visual field and if we move the stimulus uh, stimuli is lower then we start getting uh, better results so that's one possible mitigation that depending on what what your experimental design and what depending on what you are trying to to obtain this is you should something you should consider although it has the penetration that your total experimental time is going to be longer and another mitigation is instead of having the bars moving you know in in increasing or instead of being uniform we can just um, randomize the stimulus po uh, position so this uh, you see that we got four different circles here and we are getting better results with randomization and it depends the the result depend on the randomization uh, uh, it themselves and this has another trade-off that the the response snr will be will be lower but and uh, the good that um, depending on again depending on what are your objectives you will be able to to synthesize and simulate all of these scenarios until uh, you get the right combination for uh, for your experiment and now we, we are working in 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 another way of introducing the hrf into the into the model so that we, we are able to to solve this this problem okay so and this was uh, most validation we were validating these four tools the four tools are good but with these considerations of hrfs and but they were basically uh, giving uh, good results but then we wanted to check what was happening in in this uh, discrepancy right that and that paper that it was run with with afni was giving these 2.5 aspect ratios and and when we ran with an uh, mr vista mr vista and uh, we don't get this uh, the result so then we started comparing and or trying to, to reproduce those the results and and running with with Afni, we found um, systematic and uh, issues recovering right parameters so first we and um, we simulated uh, we synthesized and uh, noiseless circular ground truth and uh, data series and and uh, ground truth uh, ground truth signal and we get that in both cases when we are fitting the data with afni elliptical we use the afni circular model we already saw that the results are are okay but when we are fitting with afni elliptical we see that um, uh, there are issues they it cannot get the the right results and the same when we are uh, synthesizing elliptical so with this you see that here we are using uh, different issues and uh, AFNI has problems on recovering the right the right parameters here we did a more systematic uh, analysis so um, for different eccentricities eccentricity means the center of the ellipsis is uh, more foveal or more in the periphery and we see that the, there is a dependency between the eccentricity and the aspect ratio we did um, many other experiments that i can show you later on the the other time um, if, you, if you want to look at them or they, they are in the in the paper as well if you are interested and then uh, we added noise as well and i think um, there is no possibility that adding noise solves anything so you can imagine that with noise the results are even and uh, even worse with a lot of uh, variability so uh, first thing is that um, first result is that um, because of this software validation uh, uh, framework we saw that afni is not returning the, the the results we would we would expect 
and now we know the, what's the ground truth and we are really not obtaining the, the right results. And the, the second part that I, I guess that is not that interesting for this one, it's okay, but it's elliptical or it's not elliptical? Did you guys solve the, the discrepancy or, or not? So for that, we started looking at what, how Mr. Vista was and uh, was doing. And we see that in circular ground truth, I'm getting circular ground truth. And I mean, I'm recovering circles. If I uh, synthesize um, different aspect ratios, I'm getting different aspect ratios. It's not perfect. I mean, again, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's, it's good enough. We did all of this uh, variation and it's mostly okay. So this is different eccentricities, as per ratio of one, I'm getting a one. And I'm getting vista, uh, we're saying it's got potential. So now what happens if I introduce uh, noise to, to it? And uh, know that, um, that there is a compliance range that Mr. Vista is not bad, but out of some uh, regions, it is very bad, it's immiscible. Uh, uh, you, you cannot use it. So uh, imagine that, um, as I was saying before, that your experiment, you are in this range, and you are saying that you are going to use uh, Mr. Vista elliptical. Well, and the validation tool is saying that this is basically garbage. You are going, going to get noise unless you are not uh, in, in this range of, um, a radius of, of size of the of the peer reps, right? And um, what what can we do using this sober validation uh, framework? So we, we can do experimental de uh, design changes so that we can improve this compliance range. It's not always possible, but uh, for example, in this case, just reducing the spatial shift of bars. So instead of the bars appearing in a space, and if we I mean reducing the TR means that the bars there will be more time for the bus to show and the, the eye will, will have more, more resolution. It will be seeing more, more bus, right? And doing this, we see that the compliance range of Mr. Vista, and it goes considerably. And, and there are many other, uh, so for example, we could randomize the, the position as we said before, or there are many, many design, experimental design changes we can do and then check the compliance range before going with the, with the experimental data, right? And, and again, this is something we, we can do with a, with a, um, a validation with a validation framework. So, and, and this is just the, 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 the last detail. Um, I want to know if the real data would have um, an aspect ratio of two, would my tool be able to, to detect it? I would say, well, yes, if this is the aspect ratio of two, I mean, it's getting a big spread because it's noisy and it's not perfect, but you are going to get, um, the median is going to be um, around uh, two, which is what you, you synthesize, right? And, and what about um, if the aspect ratio that I'm synthesizing is circular, if I'm synthesizing aspect ratio of one, well, the end is going to be close to the theoretical best we can get. Again, I don't want to uh, explain it now, but if later on somebody wants to know what, what is the theoretical best, is that if there is noise and, and the smaller value you can get is a one, and the correct value is going to be a one, because of the noise, you will, it's impossible to get a, an aspect ratio of, of one, right? And we can talk, we can talk about it, but and we are getting a distribution that is close to the, to the theoretical best we can do with this level of, of noise. If we keep reducing the noise, we, we will get very, very close to, to one, but uh, these are working with um, realistic uh, noise uh, simulations. And we do it is in order to, to validate our experimental data results. And we took, um, sorry, the, the synthetic results. We took experimental data, and this, this was be, uh, very good data taken from uh, Benson and et al. This is the, the ACP7 test data. And we took um, three subjects, like um, a normal one, a better one, and a worse one, right? So in the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile of, um, uh, yeah. 
And, and what we see is, uh, okay, and I don't know what and in these three people, I don't know if it's circular or elliptical. So, because uh, that, that's what uh, the experimental data, right? But I know that and I am synthesizing circles. So, and what, what we are getting a very similar distribution with both the experimental and synthetic data. And we already show that, okay, if this interrogant would have been aspect ratios of two or 2.5, as in this other paper that we were talking about the, the discrepancy, we know that the, the tool, a distribution around, um, around here, right? So um, that's basically our conclusion of saying, okay, maybe it's not uh, circular because we cannot tell that it's exactly, exactly uh, circular with this tool. The, the conclusion is that um, we cannot and measure and if it's circular or it uh, deviates a little bit, but at least we know that it's not 2.5 uh, aspect ratio as reported before. And we guess that it's because and, and AFNI wasn't capable of um, returning the, the, the right uh, value with the experimental data they have. They had a tier of two and they have some uh, some characteristic in the experimental design. Uh, here for the, the HCP70 data, it's a tier of one, and maybe maybe longer, and maybe an uh, AFNI, if they, if they would use this experimental data, it would have done it better, I don't know. Okay, so um, that's part of the conclusion, and um, the, the last part of the conclusion is that we saw other methods in the literature. So this in A, this is a completely different method, not PRF related method um, in order to, to measure the, the electricity. And this this one, the green et al is yet another, yet another method. And we see that the values they are getting, so this is the inverse of the electricity, the, the values they are getting, they are pretty close to the theoretical best we are saying for a circle as well. You see here, what would be the median? 1.3, 1.4, or something similar to what we were to what we were watching. And these two, they, they've been they are based in in very different uh, techniques. So, and with that, and, and we think that and we can show that uh, that result is not um, uh, is not good, and that the discrepancy goes. The, that to the uh, PRF. So, the main, the, the three conclusions we uh, we have is that um, validating the tool and assessing with simulated data can clarify whether the tool can be safely applied. It's not that only that it's valid. You, need, you should say it's valid in these conditions. It's not valid for any for any condition, right? And, and then we can learn more about our tools and models. So, for example, this HRF uh, mismatch, and then we propose these strategies to, to improve for uh, future uh, experimental design. And um, we propose one solution for the, for the discrepancy. And uh, we think that um, there is no, no evidence that we can uh, accurately and confidently reject the, the circular pitch to the, the PRF which is different of saying that we think that it's circular. But if you want to model uh, PRFs, I think you should model with three parameters instead of five parameters, because then uh, there is no, um, we don't have enough to, to go and uh, over that. Hopefully in the following years, um, there will be improvements in both in uh, scanners and in software so that we would be able to say, okay, but it's 1.5 or it's 1.25 or it's one. I think that we could be able to get there, but at least right now we can say that at least it's not an aspect ratio of 2.5, of right? That's what uh, we think. So uh, with this, I would like to, to acknowledge my uh, collaborators in, the, in this work, that uh, Noah Benson, uh, Jonathan Winnauer and Ryan one the, the original paper with the and with the validation framework and the circular simulations is been already published in the plus computational biology and the the other one where we solve this discrepancy using 
the validation framework has been uh, recently submitted to BIO Archive. So, and on this second paper, it, it will be welcome because it could, and uh, we could consider the the, the changes. And um, this is really it. And now, yeah. if there are questions, uh, otherwise, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, we actually have some questions, so I was going to stop you for a sec just to okay. to see if we can catch up with this question first. Okay, so... Okay. First of all, I think uh, congratulations. <laughs> Even Cesar is texting on the chat. Um, that was super useful, at least for me. <laughs> thank you. On this kind of okay. stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we need to talk. I know that you've got another tool as well. So anybody that has tools that want to put them out there, and I will be very happy to, to talk and see what can be done. Yeah. I'm sorry, Alberto, for stopping you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine. fine. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, we, we can first see. I mean, I think you can also see the questions, right, Gary? So I, the, the first one okay. is from wait, Thesha. Wait a second, wait. I mean, I can read it. I can, I can read. I can read them from you, so it's it's fine. Um, so the first so question. What? Oh. Yeah, sorry. No, no. That I, as I'm sharing, when I click the Q and A, I see that there are five questions. Yeah. Okay. I know uh, so. Maybe you, you have to stop sharing the screen and then. Okay. Okay, but if Alberto asks them, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first question from Cesar is, can you give more details about the modeling of the noise? <laughs> you know that I had this slide prepared just for him, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, I covered them because there were uh, too many slides, but um, if it was noise, they are somewhere here. Yeah, um, basically what we did is, um, well, this was here and then, and I made them, and after this, that when I, we could talk about them, I just uh, hide them. So uh, basically we used, um, uh, this, again, this is an approximation, but we used data where uh, somebody was uh, being flickered. So and white screen, black screen, white screen, black screen, okay. And, and we selected the, the, the voxels based on on the coherence, right, of and of the of the flickering. These are the coherence maps, and not surprisingly, the visual cortex is the most coherent with the with this flickering. Then um, we took the most coherent. So this is the the coherent density distribution. We took yeah. So we were just uh, the whole brain data set just to select some voxels, right? So and we selected the most, uh, most coherent uh, voxels with the flickering, and, and then we selected the, the contrast between around 10%, so between eight and 12% and uh, uh, voxels. And, and then we calculated the, the noise. So we fit a, a sinusoidal, and we calculated different uh, noise levels. And when, well, we, for all the surviving voxels, we calculated the noise distribution, and then we get this noise distribution for all the voxels that uh, were preselected. And then we just get one uh, voxel that was very good, that we called as low noise, one that was in the middle, that middle noise voxel, and one that uh, had uh, higher, uh, higher noise. And with that, um, we were able to apply uh, these parameters so that the, the, the noise amplitude of um, our synthetic um, bulk signals is similar to the ones that we were able to observe in, in, this, in, in these people. And then you see this is the, the relative noise values of our synthesized uh, voxels. I know that this is not perfect because we don't know if when you are using flickering and when we, you are using a different stimuli probably will give you different, but I think it's a, a, a good approximation of uh, different levels of, of noise. And then, then again, this was a Siemens scanner in NYU uh, six years ago. And nowadays if we use ACP7 Tesla, 
the, the noise levels are going to be uh, different, but at least uh, we, we get something that is realistic. And then of course, and all of this um, noise, so here, all of these noise uh, parameters, um, uh, you can uh, parameter, no, you cannot know. All of them are parameterized so that you can select the levels you want and you can say, okay, I did my experiment, I got this SNR, this level, a little bit from the middle noise that these guys were proposing or I'm going to use the lower noise or or whatever. So um, this is a, and the low, middle and high, it's a basic we use for our simulations. And well, uh, actually, and I'm going to show you, and with this I will end, I, I'm going to show you um, one thing that I didn't show in the, in the experiment that I don't know where it's going to be. And right here. So, oh, no, here. So, and you see here, this is the simulations we do with low noise. And these are the aspect ratios we are getting. As I told you, when the noise is lower and lower, we are getting closer and closer to the, um, to the which is a circle, right? And this, the black dotted line, is the, the simulation with the mid level of, of noise. And the colored one are B1, B2, and B3, dorsal and ventral, for the ACP70 experimental data. And we see how these ones are up and below the, our mid noise, uh, mid noise simulations. So that's why we think that they are in this case, our need noise simulation are close to what we can find in the ACP7 Tesla simulation. Maybe not in BCBL, Siemens, uh, 3 Tesla. Uh, we would need to do an adjustments for, for that. Did I answer the question, Cesar? Maybe we can give you... Ah, he's not there. <laughs> I was surprised that I wasn't being interrupted. So it, it was because he couldn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. asked his questions in the Q&A. Tessa, can you, you, I think you can talk now. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hi, Tessa. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, b b very nice, very nice. It's, it's really nice that you simulated the, well, that you estimated the noise from real data. So, yeah, yeah so, so you were, just a question about that is like, did you remove uh, the signal from the flickering? So, so uh, are you focusing on the voxels that respond to the flickering or the other voxels that don't respond to the flickering? No, no, to the ones that respond significantly to the flickering. Okay, That's because, what, yeah. Because that, that's those that will also respond to your, to your. Yeah, because it's visual, it's a visual cortex, so. Yeah, exactly. So it's like a, a, a massive stimuli that triggers yeah. the entire cortex. Okay, okay. Yes, I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I, again, it, it depends on what, what you experiment about, then you should take another approach. But and I think that with this approach, we are being. Uh, that like, we will get um, in more more noise, but again, that's why it's nice to see how in this it's, I mean, this is a really good quality data set, and we see how the mid noise we simulate is what we are getting from the ACP. So maybe in other data sets, the low noise is what uh, would be more realistic. Uh, I don't know. We, we, we really need to check case by case. I think. But you are planning. Or the low frequency, the physiological, yes, with some yes. and which are those yes. parameters? Well, uh, I can show you then later. And okay, uh, okay. They are, yes, they, they are in the code that, and you know, for the and respiratory and and heartbeat of the yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the classical. Uh, we didn't invent anything with the with the noise uh, simulations. Yeah. Okay. But everything is parameterized so that you can. 
uh, play with it. And and if, if you got the, for example, uh, I know that um, in the BCBL you got you can measure it. So you could measure it and add exactly those parameters for the simulations before you do the simulations. You, you can do okay. that. Yeah, okay. Well, this was the easy question. <laughs> okay. Now you have other ones. Yeah. <laughs> it was very interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very, very Thank you, Cesar. Thanks, okay. Cesar. So, yeah, uh, we have a question from Remy. Uh, maybe I just read it out and then we bring him on stage. Um, so the Remy's question is, could, you, could this framework be in a way used to create a synthetic data set of a data set that cannot be shared for ethical reasons? Wow. <laughs> no, no problem. Let me we could, yeah. Yes, let me explain, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think we, we had, we started talking about uh, how to create synthetic data set in a, in a different channel on Mattermost uh, uh, a while yeah. back, actually before the, before the, this brain hack started. Um, and there's obviously the issue that for certain uh, data set, for example, if you know, they were acquired before you know, there was this big push to share data, uh, there might not have been a conference informed that come, or there's also the issue that if you acquire your data in Europe, you can honestly share them outside of Europe uh, under a certain condition because of GDPR and so on and so forth. So a way around this sometimes is that, well, I cannot share my data, but can I create a synthetic data set that, that captures enough of the statistical, uh, like, you know, properties of my real data, but that's not the real data. And therefore you do not sort of compromise the identity of the participants who were in there. Um, and uh, so I was wondering about to what level do you think you're able to sort of capture to the, those, you know, the general statistical properties of a real data set using this approach, for example? Oh, so yeah, it's, it's an incredible question. I, I never thought about, uh, about this, <laughs> this problem. Yeah, uh, is not prepared. So you are basically saying to reverse engineer the, the actual data that you cannot share and uh, be able to, to, to get the, the configuration parameters you will need to use in order to, to generate the, the synthetic data. Um, I think you could do it. Um, uh, I cannot think on, I mean, if we are talking about uh, PRFs and then we've got the, the actual fits, we could take those actual fits. So imagine, and, and you've got real data that you cannot share that mm -hmm. when you solve them, you got Y and, and Sigma. And then you use those X, Y and Sigma to synthesize the, the data and then uh, add noise and Will we get the same thing? Well, um, you know, all of these tools are dependent on the on the noise, but it's mm -hmm. it's a really interesting uh, thing to uh, to to try. Uh, I don't know if you are interested. We we can talk about it. It, it, it well, seems I, a real interesting exercise. <laughs> yeah, no, I. I mean, I am that uh, there's some sort of like initiative of people trying to get together to create some uh, sort of platform to uh, make it easier oh. to. Sh share data within because okay. uh, on the US side they have open neuro but uh, because of yeah. the GDPR the, there, there are some like prob potential problems uh, so yeah. yeah people are sort of looking of like you know okay I cannot share my data but it's still a way around this that I can share my data without sharing it so <laughs> we are we're sort of investing different approach and um, I knew about your like your framework and I was like oh okay this is like Obviously, this is very niche because if you're not doing PRF stuff, that might not be a, yeah. that might not apply to you. But yes. uh, to a certain extent, this is this is. Um, I think if you have a good enough model of how your uh, how the brain is supposed to respond to your stimulus, you can still sort of go in that direction in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's true. That and this is a specific PRF case that we can do because PRF is actually a model. And then this is, let's say the easy one 
for doing this proof of concept of how it would work and going with an, other models and i haven't even thought about it but i know that they are more more problematic maybe in, in echo i know that in echo is being doing sim, sim, synthesizing data as well maybe he can tell us something something else i don't know What's that question i was trying to coordinate the next hour with albert <laughs> <laughs> no no that and yeah it wasn't actually a question but uh, i was saying that and um, Remy said that this uh, a niche case because it's based on on PRFs. It's not a it's not generic uh, yet, and I, I cannot think in a way of making really uh, the PRF case. It's, it's much easier because it's actually a model, so that you can reverse it and that's it. But and when we are working with other model, other types of data that and I haven't even think and uh, about it how to how to solve it. But and I know that you've been synthesized in data for the internet that maybe and you know more than me so and, uh, the, way to, I've been, uh, the way i've been doing it is basically i've uh, i randomly choose the length of the events uh so i have like a parameter that can be like okay i want events that are short or medium or long or i can even uh select the minimum and the maximum length of the, the events uh and then I, I randomly generate, I don't know, let's say five events in a time series of, of whatever uh, seconds uh, I choose. Uh, and then I control also the space in between the events. So it's, it's kind of random, um, but for my case, it works. Uh, it kind of works because uh, I don't know, for example, I want to try blocks or I want to try spikes. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to manually kind of choose and randomize how the well, what the data looks like, and I also add the noise and uh, uh, similar to what Gary is doing with the uh, low frequency physiological and stuff. Uh, we can talk about this if you want. Uh, let me gather mm -hmm. yeah. something. Sure, sure. Um, okay, thank you. Professor is also saying there are several softwares to create synthetic fMRI data based yeah, on the timings cool. of the paradigm and the block equations uh, that the model MR physics, that model yeah. physics. Yeah, yeah, I've seen tools over there when I was doing the literature review for the discussion, but yeah, and they are another uh, for us. I think uh, some kind of merging between what you do, Gary, and how I was approaching it would be ideal, actually. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about that. Uh, how, how much do you need for the hands-on? Uh, it's not, I mean, we can continue with the, with the questions. The hands-on everything is, and well, if we don't have time to finish it, just following the slide, they will be able to follow okay. it. So I'm not worried about the hands-on. It's, it's okay. very easy. It, I mean, it can get longer if there are questions, but if there are questions for the talks, we can go on as long as you want. Okay, yeah. I mean, Cesar has got another three questions, and then I have another simple one. So yeah. maybe we don't mind that will be quick. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Basically, how do you avoid overfitting on your on your model? Overfitting. Yeah. But uh, what do you mean? Everything that we are doing at this level, it's um, at the same at the same voxel. So it's uh, every um, time series is voxel independent. So no, the thing is that uh, on one of your first slides, you were showing how you try different parameters until you find the ah, one that how the PRF works. model works. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, and that I'm one is it's- Cross validation of some kind or? Yes, 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 yes. And all of these tools, but I, mean, I show you different tools here. So this is a specific of the, and of the tool. So, and- uh, Yeah, yeah, my question was specific about um, RPF, no, RPF, PRF? No, no, but the, the thing is that are different. So I don't know where, where I am now. Wait a second, wait a second. Small is here. Yeah, that, and this depends on, on every individual implementation for so analyze PRF. So it does a, has the three different types of, of sheets okay. and that's a cross validation that does, okay, that's the, their thing. And Mr. Vista uses another way of, of solving this problem. 
Yeah, and Avni, I have no idea what, how and Avni solves this and overfitting. And one of the of the reasons of the um, of this, so we shouldn't worry yeah. to know how Avni solves that problem. I just need to know that it's it's giving me the the right results, right? So, for example, when we started and with this problem and we just try to to reproduce it and um, um we took uh, mr vista we took Anthony and talking two, two or three years ago and we were talking to with reynolds that kepa helped me talk uh, talk with reynolds and he was helping us making a new run and everything and meanwhile we were in this process reynolds told us oh and i found a bug in the code the formula for the ellipses i forgot to multiply it by two ah, okay and but I mean, we would never ever find this bug in the code. He did, and but at the time we didn't have the just we're trying to run, and I don't know how he he find it. But that's the the thing that we want to separate the, in this uh, this part. So yeah, for analyze PRF is the, one of the latest I use. It does cross validation. And yeah. Yeah, I was talking but about that. that's. Yes, yeah. that's a specific of uh, every one of the uh, of the tools. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, then Cesar has got three questions. Um, the last one I don't understand. So maybe Cesar, do you wanna? Okay, I'm gonna allow you okay, to talk. Again. Yeah, I think it's gonna be easier this way. Ah, well, the, the last one is, is very easy because uh, you wanted someone to ask for the best theoretical results. So I wonder about the best theoretical results. <laughs> you wanted someone to ask for it. So I ask. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. Now, okay, now, now, now I get what you're what you saying. Yeah, and yes, this one is very, very, very easy and nice to see. And I think it's high school level level and <laughs> information let, let me see if i find it yeah results no, sorry discrepancies in there thank you yeah here so and if you are measuring and sigma one and basically the aspect ratio is the and you divide the the big one by the by the small one right and basically if you and the measurements are independent but you add noise to to both of them you will never be able to 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 get a one right it's always going to be uh, bigger than one and then in, in a, a small uh, PRFs, this effect, because noise is always going to be the same, and in a small PRFs, uh, this effect is going to be much, much bigger. So if you you want to measure electricity in very big uh, boxes, maybe you could accomplish it. So you could do simulations and just with uh, with big PRFs, first check it circularly, where are the, the big PRFs you want to study, and maybe you could get uh, closer but the 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 thing is that um uh, it is impossible to to get better better than this and then we oh uh, sorry i think ah i see now where the questions are uh, do you see the, my my screen yes 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 it's still there see the presentation or not? <laughs> we see yes. Ah, yes, yes sorry sorry yeah so basically we do um this simulation uh, where is this here at the end. Okay, and yeah, this comes from the from the paper, and this is what you get. So depending on the you you add the the same noise. So R one is equals to R two, and you get one thousand random values with a noise factor of 0.7 in in this case, and, and we only consider non-negative when you add noise you could get ne negative radios so you get only radios that are um, bigger than than zero and and we plot them so we see that we get here for very small radius and this is the median value but the, the values are crazy it, it, it is this is just the distribution is crazy but when we are going bigger and bigger and bigger when, when we are in six and we are closer to to one 
but usually we work in this in this radius and you saw that the results were around and uh, around here right one point something for sizes around two which is uh, look at here so 1.5 1.4 1.3 depending on the on the region we are uh, more or less uh, here and this basically uh, even though we we really need to improve a lot the um, the noise from the scanner in order to be able to to get accurate measurements and that we see in our simulation when we got from zero noise to low noise to noise and you get closer and closer to, to aspect ratio of one. Yes, Cesar? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we go on with the uh, hands on. Otherwise, we will not have much time because yeah, well, I feel like we can go on and on with the questions. Um, yeah, well, wait a second. I see that Cesar has another question about the, the HRF. And um, yes, Cesar, um, in order to do this, we, we are considering different options. So one option would be just run a single pulse uh, before doing PRFs and get the, the HRF for that single pulse and use the, the exact HRF in every, in every feed per every voxel. Maybe the HRF for the pulse is not going to be exactly the same to when we are watching different stimulus, but we think that the approximation, approximation would be better. That's one side. The other way we are planning to do is just fitting the HRF parameters at the same time that we are fitting the, the PRF parameters. And more parameters, noisy data, um, and yeah, it was, this was supposed to be a, a summer project for, for, for one person. I don't, it's going slow. It's going slow. We can talk about that as well, Cesar. Yeah, but very good. Very practical approximation. Okay, uh, shall we go on? Yeah, so then um, we go with the hands on. Yes, yeah. How do you think this approach could be extended to other more cognitive domains? Attention memory. Ah, yes, this is similar question, Remy said. And for this, we will need to, I think that we could use the um, the other uh, the other toolset that they, they already uh, exist and see how can we recover the and I don't know how it would work um, in the Cesar do you think that we could use those simulation with no noise and get the exact parameters if if that's true then it's it's a matter of, of testing and adding more uh, i don't know i think it can be done but you you know more than than i do on this regard my question was more yes, uh, sorry uh, yes. Yes, yes, my, go. my comment was more that uh, prf is is a very fixed uh, experimental paradigm and if we move to more complex cognitive domains uh, okay. and no sensory okay. and even other sensory domains like, like uh, is it, well how can we move and, and validate our tools when we don't know the the real the grand truth that that, that was my my point that it's very interesting yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. difficult to extrapolate this up uh, this approach to more conflict uh, more complex uh, cognitive domain that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the point rather than the simulation that as i said in the chat there are some softwares that based on the timings of the responses and and assuming a hemodynamic model uh, and looking at the block equations that govern the mri physics uh, uh, data and there are several softwares for that i mean you might like one or the other but they are available and each of them has their own assumptions how to do it the, the difficult part is that we don't have such a good experimental crfs 
uh, population yeah, research yeah. field where there is a, a, a long history of, uh, of theory about how our vision works. But what, how our attention works, how our memory works, how our olfaction works, is not so clear. But still, it's, it's very interesting and the talk was very uh, insightful in a sense that it's, 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 it's how we should perform science in, in, in some sense when we create tools to, to to know at least validate the, the grand truth and our software. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't have an answer to, to your question, of course. And I know that in PRFs, they've been, uh, I think, Napen uh, et al. published last year or this year one paper of using PRFs in the hippocampus. But and I don't know the, the details. Um, but, but you are right. Uh, vision. It's a special case. We've got a stronger signal. We've got strong models. Uh, yeah, it's it, it was the, the the very best guide to one of these uh, platforms. I, I agree with you. Okay, I think we, we should move to the hands-on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So for the hands-on. Uh, and uh, the results we have here. No, wait a second. I will go directly. Uh, um... uh, yes, so you know, Gary, we have 30 minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, so this would be the, the hands on. So then um, I assume that everybody has this this installed but and I will be doing it myself to to see that and it really shouldn't be any uh, I don't know if I because I need to copy and paste from the presentation so that and then if somebody's watching the the video they could see that if I copy and paste from the presentation and it works it should work for, for them as well and I already pasted the the results um, uh, and, in the, and it should be easy to, to follow this uh, offline. So basically, we create a, a test folder, and anyway, you and then and you create one and variable to. So I already had the test folder created, and I move to this uh, to this page that I I was already. Oh wow. Just as well. Nice. Okay, and it should be Helerma for uh, for you. Okay. And now, see we base there. Okay. So, and with with it, we can run the first um, the first container. And why why do we run it? In other to get by so and we know that all of these tools are very very dynamic and it's bad to have one config file that then you need to update and you didn't update and then you know the last version so what we do is that once you download the, the docker container if you run it empty as we say here i'm running it it will generate the latest um, config file for uh, for you that it will work with this version of the of the container right so now it's uh, is doing something. The Docker container is, is running, and um, okay. And then what we are going to do is um, okay, it's still running. We are going to to rename it to to rename it, but it's a very good practice to rename it because usually, and um, well, you this is for subject one. But you could use it for for many for many subjects. But when we are you are doing your your simulation, you want to have control of what you are doing. And in this case, we are renaming it one and and session brain uh, brain hack Donostia 2020. Okay. Again, it's not necessary, but 
and we like to okay so this already ran and we see that how we've got a uh, uh, config defaults uh, json that now we just uh, name it okay so then you can you can play with different uh, configurations and now what we are going to do is we are going to edit the the config file so that it reflects that it's for subject one and for session name uh, brain hack uh, 2020 okay so if we edit it you see that i'm copying and pasting and everything so if we edit this i think zero zero one oops um, it was brain hack donosti 2020 okay and uh, now i'm not going to to show it but here you see that we've got all the parameters we want to to simulate so i will want the center to be uh, zero zero with a theta of zero sigma major of one degree sigma minus of one degree if we are using another model which is the different of gaussians it will have another sigma major and another sigma minor so here we say we specify what H hrf we want to use i don't know what it is the hrf the vista to gammas in this case the duration of the hrf so all the parameters we are going to to use will be set up uh, here and um, there is a, a manual in the in the wiki that you can see it uh, where was it yeah see detailed usage here okay if you go to this part you how to edit the json file so that you can do whatever you want in this case we are simulating just two voxels but um it creates a, a, a grid okay. and go i want x0 to be 0 1 2 and 3 and x and y to be 0 1 2 and 3 then it will create all the combination of x0 with all the y's x1 with all the y's and then it can grow pretty quickly you can get 100,000 voxels pretty easily or you can say and for every combination with a random noise low random noise please give me one uh, 100 uh, voxels exactly in the same place to simulate how the noise is going to affect um, and the, the simulation is location so it's and uh, it's pretty powerful and and all the details in how to do it you have it here uh, right now you see that i just edited the the name uh, sorry and i just edited the the name and the session so that and it works but then if you got interest you go to the wiki and you just keep editing whatever and uh, whatever you like to to edit okay so it's uh, this step and now we we just can do the synthesizing so we've got the the config that we will now we are going to run the docker container and it will generate the the synthetic uh, nifty and this one we should be able to just copy and paste the the command okay so it's uh, it's running and it's doing the um the computation i mean we can even control if we want to parallelize and uh, yeah th there are um, many different options on how to run because um depending on how many voxels you want to synthesize it takes a while it, it really it really takes uh it can take a it can take a while now with two voxels it should be very very fast okay see it's opening and the six workers i've got and matta workers that i've got in locally if i would have said and uh, don't parallelize it would already have finished with the two with the two two voxels okay so meanwhile it's finishing now we will see what the results are going to be and i'm pasting here what is going to be my, uh, my results and you should see the same that's why i was saying that it would be easy to follow it um uh, offline because we will have all the results here here in echo i must confess that the first time i ran it i said brain hack san sebastian 2020 oh, no. then i saw that <laughs> then i saw that it was brain hack donostia then 
I quickly edit all the slides and I say D, but I didn't have to time to to do the screenshot again. But you see that here is SS, okay? So so sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, this is for non basque speakers. The, and here in Bilbao, not everybody talks Basque, but when, when I'm speaking Spanish, I say I am going to San Sebastian. If I'm speaking Basque, I say I'm going to Donostia. And here they always say Donostia always. They get surprised, but I just switch <laughs> languages completely. So sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So uh, and now let's see. The, the results we, we see here, we have them here. So and below the test folder, we will have the folder called bits and, and we will have one very important folder, which is the, the stimuli. We are using the default stimuli that you could, the, what stimuli are you using in the, in the first config file as well. So you can edit absolutely every parameter, all the noise parameter, parameters, and, and all the peer location parameters can be edited in that config file we saw at the beginning. And it will generate the, the stimuli if you want to use it later in your experiments or, or whatever. And well, and it, it, needs, it needs it to, to solve. Uh, and as well, when we do the analyze, we'll take the stimuli from, from here. And then um, in derivatives, we've got uh, peer synth, subject one, and session. Um, uh, yeah, here it generates all the and um, all the parameters that we we used in order to, gen to generate that. And the in, in bits, the first the data comes right after bits. So we've got the subject one, session one. Uh, in fun in functional, we we can find the the nifty file. And this nifty file, it's we can see it uh, here. I think it's here. Yeah, it's basically a nifty file with uh, two voxels and um, 200 data points. Yeah, so uh, we could even uh, sit here. MRI info, this would be bits. Says function. Proof and it's PRF. I think it's ICQ nifty. And, and it is it, it, an actual uh, nifty nifty file. So I've got uh, Malda here. If you want to read uh, something uh, later on, and if we visualize it with uh, with any tool that you like, you will see that this is an, an actual time and created. So and these are the, the type of tests you, you want to do before before going on. Okay, and uh, yes, this is what I, I was saying that um, in this file, we've got um, characterized all the parameters, every, um, every voxel. So we saw that we just have two voxels. So um, every one of those voxels can be reproduced using, you see here, um, wide noise amplitude, cardiac amplitude, cardiac frequency, respiratory amplitude, low frequency, the, uh, this is the SNR we, we obtain once we run it. Um, yeah, these are the parameters for the, where are the parameters for the stimuli? Well, everything uh, is here are the parameters of the, of the stimuli. Okay, so every, everything will be, will be here. And again, if we got 100,000, this file can, can grow a little bit. It will be a JSON that, and that treats every, every voxel uh, independently. Okay, so and once we do the, um, the synthesizing, and we we will do the same with the with the analysis. Okay, we cannot select the text. Oh. Okay, so now and we are going to create the config file, and for the analysis. And it seems that it has done it already. Yes. So PRF uh, analyze Vista default uh, config JSON. So we can copy again. This is not necessary, but it makes life much easier. And then again, we are going to to edit the 
the names. Okay. So this was an C1 and this was Brainhack Donosti 2020. Okay. And, and once we do this, we, okay, sorry. I had an slide even, even for that. And now we can uh, we can run it. Okay, so you see it's basically the same uh, procedure always, and it's very easy to script it and, 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 and both for synthesizing and analyzing, uh, so both for simulation and both for real data. So it, it's very, very easy to, to, um, to script. Gary, okay, so, uh, yes? Cesar made a comment on the chat on the question. Ah, well, what, what have you said? Uh, is it? Uh, yes. So it is very similar to how we simulate realistic noise with trends, physiological cardiac, and respiratory condition. Actual implementation, it might be the same. And, and he wants to see the MATLAB code that does the. Uh, Cesar, I will see the GitHub repository. You can, and at the end, if I have time, I will go to GitHub and I will show you where, where it is and send uh, send you the link. I hope it's okay <laughs> for him. And okay, so we have done this, and now we should see that uh, we've got a new file. So, so you see that um, Mr. Vista is doing the actual uh, uh, the for the two voxels. Yeah, it has finished already. This was very fast. This this is a a small pro nifty 2 and python and we should fix okay so if we do the the three thing now we see that in derivatives we have a prf analyzed vista as well this could be analyzed afni analyzed popeye analyzed whatever the same subjects and then here we have the the fits and in this case it could be a json it could be what it could be whatever we decided to share the, the data and independently and in a nifty form because it's a uh, it's a standard. We could have made any any decision. So you see, this is giving the x zeros, the y zeros. Well, actually, um, we are going even to to see. So nifty read and okay, I'm in test folder. If we do it's and derivatives and PRF analyze vista sub zero zero one says PhD. I should have said it. Sorry about that. And is it no, this is not correct. Twenty twenty. And for example, we can see what are the estim estimations for X, okay? The uh, zero, zero, if I remember correctly, and I don't, I don't know right now. Oh. Okay. I, I don't know what, what's going on now. So I, I made some some mistake maybe. Okay, the, I think I pasted the the, the results. No, didn't do I? Okay, I'm going to move on. So this is basically an, another another nifty with two boxes, and it's got only two values, which are the the two um, estimates that it has fit for x zero and y zero. We know what we were and and code add, when we added noise, what is going to to recover? Okay, and we, here we have the R square, the model predictions, and all the predictions. Okay, and now uh, we can do the same with the third, uh, the third one, and then uh, should be very very fast. So first we get the the default uh, config file. 
then we rename it if it ends we rename it and so that it can find and where it is and oops sorry Yeah, this was 001, and this was and brain hack. Oh, what I'm doing, substitute brain hack, Donostia 2020. Okay, and, and with this, I think that we can already run it. Okay, this should be very fast as well. And once we run it, we see that in derivatives, we get the peer report derivatives, and we will see that we get results in as a dot map table, as a, a JSON, and so that we can use in, in other tools. And there are options that we can say, please uh, plot me um, plot me PNGs or, or whatever you want. I, I just put it one. Okay, so, so maybe uh, we can. Gary, yes. could you, for example, create a PDF with the report? Yes, yes, of course. Of course. And I haven't done it here, but uh, that's up to you. And you can put whatever you want inside the. And in this case, in the current implementation, we just give all the results that then you can um, use in any analysis software and then all the plots that we, were, we used in our papers and but you can i mean you can design and any any figure you want the thing is how flexible is this so it's the, the, depending on the amount of time you want to 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 use yeah, making it flexible right yeah that, that's the, the that's the problem so if, if open one of those i think that um, this was test data i think Yeah, Guillermo test folder and bits derivatives. And now, yeah, so very bad fits in this case. Well, really, really bad fits. It then this is a, a we we are using randomized uh, noise, and depending on the on the noise, it will. Uh, generate and fit different different files. Uh, so that's these are the two voxels, how they've been they've been fitted. Okay, and and, and that's it. And we can see the the same thing. Well, I don't know why this failed, but let's hope that the table it's going to be derivative PRF uh, report subsession. And uh, what node? Okay. Uh, okay. And here we see the and a summarized version of what we introduced it. So here in synth, we see the, the main parameters that we are interested. So we used X0, Y0 with X0, sigma minus and sigma major. So this is a circle, right? If both and axes are the same, then this should be a circle. We use an HRF type of gamma with a tier one and noise level of, uh, mid. And then this is the the SNR of the time series we, we got. And this well, this that did it. Here we could have AFNI and we could we could have um, other tools. And um, well, the location is bad, not very bad because zero point. I mean, ten percent of a degree is nothing. This is zero point one degrees, zero point three degrees. It's not very good, but it's not terrible. And the size, as you saw in the picture is uh, is terrible what we know is that if we would we would have run 
100 repetitions of the very same thing, we would have get and something, the median value would have been uh, good enough, right? So that's why, why we are doing uh, this kind of simulations. And it's very telling when you are seeing this kind of results in experiment where you, you only have one time series per, per voxel, the results you are obtaining and depending on the noise level you've got, they, they can be uh, as bad as, uh, as Okay, so we saw this, and yes, and I, I'm plotting here uh, both the table. So in this case, and the the center was okay, and for boxer one, I mean, I did exactly the same. I just ran exactly the same in both, and and the SNR is similar. The x zero and y zero is not that bad, and we see that the size the size is always the most problematic one. The size is not very very precise with this level of noise. With lower noise, it's getting better, but it's not it's not very good. And this, um, yeah, um, in GitHub, you you have scripts and utilities to be able to uh, to run this in, uh, more massively and to be able to um, to do your simulations. And we are working in tighter interaction with bits for experimental data because uh, right now uh, we we don't allow to use 3d data we we are just using the outputs for prep which are we convert them to to the nifties so to the gifties and then we convert them to nifty twos and and we just consider them as a an one big uh, row of of boxes and we need to, to do a little bit more work on uh, and being able to the data and data in other in other formats. And this is what I was telling that there is no 3D support right now. We just are working in in 3D. And yeah, that yeah, this is um, we are trying to make it more generic for PDF analysis tool. So we only added one other tool developer, and and I had to help him a lot in order to implement. His, um, there is a wiki, but it, it can get a little bit confusing with so much um, um, Docker containers, and it, it can get a little bit complex uh, being a developer of and uh, adding one of your tools here to x analyze analyze, um, and that's it. That's